Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today we're going to talk about the J Color Chooser, which is going to allow us to create a color chooser dialog box where the user can actually select any color he wants. All right, so as I said it, there is a specific class, a specific Java class that we can use to actually create a color chooser dialog box. And that class is called J color chooser. And that's what we're gonna see in this video particularly. So that's it. So my project is organized this way. I have two classes as usual, the test of R class where I'm creating my frame instance and then the frame, the my frame class, which is extending the J frame and where I'm defining all the, the attributes and properties of the frame. And for this um, example, specifically, we're gonna apply a new layout manager. Uh, we will say flow layout here. Let's import flow layout. We're gonna need a button. So that will be J button, BTN. So let me import the button. I will instantiate that button inside the constructor. So I'll say button equal new J button. And that if I wanna add the button to the frame, so this, that add BTN, making reference to the button. So now what we're gonna do here is that we want to make sure that when the user clicks on the button, this button, as you can see BTN here, we want it to output the color chooser dialog box. Okay, so let me first set the text to the button. I'll say open the color chooser. So now this is the button when normally when we click on this, we're supposed to see the color chooser dialog box. So what we are going to do is we will need to implement the action listener and add it to this particular button. And I will say implement action listener like that. And then down here, btn that add action listener. And I will say this. All right, so I need to import the action listener as usual, and I need to add on implemented methods. And then down here in the action performed method, let me change the action event name. I will say EVT. I will declare a color instance. Then I will say is equal to J color chooser that show dialog. So I need to pass three parameters. The first one is going to be the, um, the parent component. So the parent component here is the frame. So I'll say this. So that's making reference to the class we are finding ourselves in. And I need to set the title. I will say select a color. The other, the third argument here is going to be the initial color. So we can say color that blue, for example. So let's import color class like this and then semicolon here, right? So this is it. This color that blue, we could actually declare it um, up here by saying color and then say initial underscore color equal color that blue then semicolon so that in here we will simply pass initial underscore color as a parameter so now let's say that we run our program and then when we click on the button there you can see our color chooser dialog box is showing and then the default color or the initial color is blue all right so now what do we want to do let's say that we want to change the background color of our frame once the user has chosen its, its color, we want color of our frame to change. So we will say this, that get content pane, that set background, and then we'll pass in color. So color is this particular instance here. And we are doing this get it content pane here because that's basically the code we need to write to change the background color of our frame. So this here is making reference to our frame because this class, my frame is extending J frame. So we simply need to write this get content pane. It's going to get the content pane, the inner area of the frame and then set its background color according to the color that a user will choose from the color chooser. Now let's run, open the color chooser. If I choose this particular color, then okay. Now you can see the color of my frame has changed based on the color I chose. Now, if I select this and click on OK and all of that, we can also play around the, the initial color chooser. If I say green here and when I run open, now you can see green is the initial color chooser. If I say click like this, it takes the color green. OK, if I click and select a different color, there you can see. All right, so let me add a set foxable here and I will say false. OK, so this we are changing the background color of 
our frame, but we can say that instead of changing the background color of the frame, we want to change the background color of something like the text, a text area. All right. So um, let's remove this layout manager. We will say no here. And then uh, that means that we need to set the bounds for the button to 25, 25, 250. Yeah, so this is the button. Maybe reduce the height a little bit and then the width to 150, if that's okay, 180. Yeah, that looks okay to me. So now let's declare a text area. We will say J text area and I'll call it text area. Now import the J text area class in the constructor. We say text area equal new J text area. And I'll say, uh, I'll set the text, write your comment here. So that's it for the text area. I need to set its bounds. Text area that set bounds x25, 84, y, 300, 100. You know what we want to do? We need to add this to the frame. So this is that add text area. Then let's run. So there you can see the text area. Let me simply increase the dimensions. Maybe 200 for the height will be okay. 250 here, 340. Yeah, this seems okay now. So now what we want to do is that we want to change the color of the text area whenever the user chooses a particular color from the color chooser dialog box. So it's as simple as that. We say text area that set background. Okay. So make sure you are doing it in the action performed method here and that your button is having this line of code where you are adding the action listener to it. So in this method, we we're going to pass color. Okay. Color is this one. So this is going to store whatever color the user will select from the color chooser dialog box, and then it will apply it to the background of the text area. Let me click here. If I select this and then OK, so now you can see the background color of our text area has changed. So that's basically it. Let me try to embellish my button. So btn at set font, new font, Arial font at bold 18, btn at set background. I can say color that blue. I can say BTN that set foreground color at white. Let me apply the, some of these properties to the text area. So text area that set font, okay. And then text area that set foreground. So let me run. Let's reduce the size of the button text. So I'll write 12 here when I click, select okay. Now the text area has changed. So you can actually put as many buttons as you want here. You can say that the first button would be to change the background color of the um, text area. The second button will be to change color, the foreground of um, our text area. The other button will be to change the background color of the button and all of that. Okay. So that's what I will show you how you can do that. You simply say BTN2, BTN3, I think that's okay. So let's simply copy this, paste it like this. BTN1, uh, this is two, my bad. Two here, two, 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 and two, and two. This will be that set background. I will change the color, the text of the button. The first button, I will simply say background color. The second here, I will say foreground color. All right, so the first button will be used to change the background color of the text area. The other one will be used to change the foreground. So for now, if I say 100 here, and then I will say 150, 100, 40 for the height, 40 for the height as well. That did not work. 180, I say 250. Yeah, well, I need to add the second button. So this that add BTN2. So that's it. Uh, if I say 150 here for this button and 150 for this one and 200 like this, 220, 215. Yeah, so now this looks okay. As for the second button, I can say that its background color is red. Yes. So now what we're going to do, so for the foreground here, I'll say gray. And um, so as I was saying, the first button here will be used to actually 
change the background color of our text area. The second one will be used to change the background color of our text area. So now in the um, action performed method, all we're gonna do is if evt.get source is btn, that's the first pattern. Then as we said, we will set the background color of our text area. Or else if evt.get source is btn2, then we will say text area that set foreground is a color with lowercase like this. So let's try to make it work. So if I click on the first button, select this, now the background color changes. The second button, I select this blue color. Now you can see the text has changed. If I select this other color, yeah, the text has really changed. So guys, that's it on how you can work around, uh, work with um, color chooser dialog box, how you can get the color when the user selects on a particular color and then apply that color to your GUI components, change the background, change the foreground color, you know, change the frames, background color as well. And that was it. So I hope this video was informative and please don't forget to like, to share, to comment, to ask any question if you have, and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.